Hey everybody, Ben here, and we've got less than two weeks to go to our next big tournament, the Dorset Dungeon Bowl. Now this is a sold out event, we've got 40 coaches signed up to battle it out in the various dungeons. We've got the dungeon mats here, we've got the tokens here, as in the treasure chest tokens, we've got everything basically here and lined up, ready to go. But we've had some FAQs and... Thanks to Games Workshop, we've had a pretty sweet Norse release, so just wanted to go through a few updates ready for that event. Now, we would love to have the tournament rosters in by next Saturday, which is the 1st of May, I think. Let's just go with the 1st of May. Um, so that gives me and Ben a good opportunity to go through and make sure that everything's lined up ready for the event. Anyway, let's have a look at the updates really quickly. Okay, so if you pop to boneheadpodcast.com, Scroll down a little bit, you'll see Dorset Dungeon Bowl uh, Saturday 7th of May. Give it a click, you can see we've got the D Dungeon Bowl rules there, the Dorset Dungeon Bowl rules. Now this is version 1.3, which I've updated today. Uh, I updated it last week with some FAQ questions as well. Um, and I thought we'd just take a couple of seconds to look through it. Now there's PNGs, there's pictures of each of the pages there, but actually if you scroll down a little bit more, not only is there a team sheet, now in the team sheet you will see both the old and the new Norse teams uh, as they are both eligible for this event. So if you've got an old Norse team and you were planning on running it, you can still run it. If you've picked up a new Norse team and you want to run it, you can run it. And uh, also we've updated it so that the two colleges that the Norse team goes into, so College of Heavens and the College of Beasts, they're also updated. So if you're running a Beasts or Heavens roster, you've got more options now. So pick up a Norse team. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the Dungeon Bowl rulebook. I know we've been through this a couple of times already, but yeah, version 1.3, 24th of April. And we will go down to the changes just to make sure that everything's up there. Uh, so like I just said, teams from the teams of Legend PDF are eligible, including the old Norse ones. Uh, the new Norse roster from Spike 14 is also eligible. So you can basically play with whatever you are planning on playing with or you can play with the new thing now. Now, do not forget, if you are running a non-Dungeon Bowl team, so taking a standard team, so you're bringing new Norse or you're bringing dwarves or something like that, you must choose a wizard from the Dungeon Bowl book. So choose a college to align yourself with. It's cool, you get a free wizard. Uh, if you don't select a wizard, you won't get a wizard on the day. So make sure that when you are submitting your roster, uh, you choose a wizard and let us know. Let us know your NAF names as well. Super useful. We're going to start pinging around uh, towards the end of the week with like, hey, thank you for sending your roster. It's looking great. We'll update the uh, coaches of this that we'll put on the Dungeon Bowl um, page as well, just so you can see whose roster's received and everything like that, just so we can kind of get it nice and squared away. Oh, roster's due by Saturday the 30th of April, so Ben and I can start checking it from the 1st of May. There we go. Not even I know when the rosters are due. That's worrying, isn't it? Big, big, big thank you to those of you who've already sent your rosters in. Absolutely love it. I have been absolutely ransacked the last month now so uh, a little bit behind but i'm trying to catch up with um emails and things i think i've seen all the dungeon bowl faqs and started to see some of these rosters but ben and i will spend the next couple of weeks catching up so a couple of faqs to go through um we've <laughs> the swarming question was asked does swarming work in dungeon bowl no um sadly players can only enter the dungeon via teleporter and wizards love proper law and order so no sneaking on extra players uh question two snotling lineman in the blood bowl rosters have the titchy skill but it's not present on the dungeon bowl uh snotlings in the college of life roster which one is to be used uh, snotling is a snotling is a snotling so snotlings in the dungeon bowl um, College of Life roster will have Titchy as well and if you use our Dungeon Bowl roster builder the rules are uh, a slap bang there. We're assuming that that's a typo and we want to make things as simple as possible. We don't want non-Dungeon Bowl Snotlings versus Dungeon Bowl Snotlings to have different rules. That just seems dumb. Not on board with that. Dungeon Bowl is already interesting enough. Uh, so a couple of new FAQ questions here. How does ball and chain work in the dungeon? First of all, I love that someone is brewing up a roster with ball and chains. Okay, this is excellent. That means we're going to see some goblins. Um, so the question was around what happens if I put my uh, throw in template in and I roll the direction that hits into the wall? Now we're going to treat that in the same way that the player is being pushed into a wall by a block okay it's you're not choosing to move there you would automatically move there so simply if you were using a ball and chain pointing it down a corridor and on a one to two you're going to go into the wall you don't move but your opponent gets to roll to see if you uh hit the wall and fall over 
All in all, ball and chains, a bit risky in a dungeon, but I absolutely love the gusto behind that. So yeah, we're just going to use the push into the wall rules from page 50. It's a 50% chance that it's going to be alright. So if you're going down a corridor, there is a basically 1 in 6 chance that you're going to melt yourself uh, with every square of movement. I like those odds. Last queue uh, we had was, and this one came through, um, well, I answered it today. I think it came through yesterday from Derek. Uh, how does the Grey Shadow Wizard work? So this one's an interesting one, and this is kind of why I wanted to talk this through. What the rule says is uh, pick up the dude and place him back on the pitch within six uh, within five squares so that brings up a bit of a quandary when there are no squares for you to measure through so what i mean by that and this is why i'm doing this by video although i'm putting it out on the podcast line as well so uh guys if you're listening to the podcast you will just have to assuming you're not driving close your mind and imagine um what we're achieving here so let's move the whiteboard up to the front here because uh, I'm going to do some doodles because doodling is the best way to do it. So if you were in a room and you wanted to use the shadow spell, you could go one, two, three, four, five squares. So we're allowing you to go through walls, but not through voids. And what I mean by a void area is a wall is um, a buffer between what would be dungeon tiles or, you know, if you're using our maps rooms. So uh, basically adjacent areas that are not a door so this is a wall you can't walk through the wall right um but this is a void as in the void area has no squares now most of the time you could figure it out and i imagine that when games workshop faqs it it will go that way I, but it is a bit weird and we want things to make uh, as much sense as possible so if you were here and you wanted to bamf to a different place you could go uh, you essentially just count five squares but you can go through doors you can go through models you can go through walls but you can't go through voids so you can go one two three four five you, you're still basically going to be able to cover it what would be more difficult is if you're kind of in the middle here what and you go one two three four five you're still going to be able to do the majority of what you can do but it's just a good way to kind of uh, make sure that it's lined up i think the only one would be on map b so for game two uh you may have difficulty getting from one lane into another lane uh but actually you should have plenty of movement with the spell to be able to move it around and the whole point of the spell is you just want to disappear and appear on the other side of your opponent's line so fundamentally the spell works exactly as it's written and um, we just clarified it a little bit to make as much sense as possible rather than well how many squares am i traveling through because there's no squares to count if you can't count squares let's take away the opportunity to count squares wrong so we're going to ignore that you're going to trace it as if you were moving but walls are fine models are fine doors are fine whatever's fine portals are fine you just count the squares if there's no squares you can't count them so you have to find a different way hopefully that makes sense now that is all the faqs that we've had so far i imagine as we uh, ramp up now and everyone starts building their rosters they're going to think oh what about this what about this what about this drop us a message put it in the comments on this video as well so that others can see it um and uh, i need to get my act together and get back in the discord to, to brew this all up but it is going to be a busy couple of weeks for us super excited because the 7th of may not only is the dorset dungeon bowl kickoff point but it should be the airing of our first of the series uh, for our Dungeon Bowl Championship as well. So it should be a very dungeony day and I cannot wait. I literally cannot wait. I'm so excited. I'm so happy with the dungeon maps we've got printed. I'm so happy with the tokens that we've got made up. And I'm so happy that we sold out. I just wish we had a bigger venue so that we could go really big. But hey, enjoyment's awesome. So for now, I'm going to disappear. Thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait to just play Dungeon Bowl with a whole bunch of awesome coaches. So thank you very much. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy Dungeoneering. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can or... You can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.